Hey everyone, welcome back. Right now is the best time to be a .NET developer exploring AI. With the latest libraries, integrating large language models into your applications is no longer a challenge. It's straightforward and consistent. The key library behind this is Microsoft.Extensions.AI, which gives us clean abstractions for working with different providers. In this video, I'm going to walk you through using GitHub models with .NET. We'll set up the OpenAI adapter, configure a chat client, and in just a few lines of code, have our application talking directly to a model. I've already set up a .NET 9 console app, so let's go ahead and add the required libraries to get started. First, open the NuGet Package Manager. In the search box, type Microsoft.Extensions.AI. Now, I'm not going to install this one directly. Instead, I'll install the Microsoft Extensions.AI.OpenAI package because that's what we need to connect to GitHub models. The OpenAI package already brings in the core Microsoft.Extensions.AI library as a dependency, so we don't need to add it separately. Let's go ahead and install Microsoft Extensions.AI.OpenAI. And that's it. The installation is complete, and you can see the library is now added to the project. Let's clean up the program.cs. Now let's add our chat client. iChat client is the main abstraction from Microsoft.Extensions.AI that we use to communicate with large language models in .NET. So here, I'm creating a variable of type iChat client and assigning it to a new chat client. First, we need to give the model name. This tells GitHub models which large language model we want to use. We'll fill this in a little later. Next, we need to provide an API key. This key is what authenticates our application with GitHub models, so without it, we can't make requests. For now, I'll leave it blank, but later we'll add the actual key. After that, we need to set the endpoint. Inside OpenAI Client Options, there's an endpoint property. Since we're connecting to GitHub models, the endpoint will be HTTPS colon slash slash. This tells our client to send all requests directly to GitHub models. And finally, we call dot as I chat client. This step converts our provider-specific chat client into the standard iChat client interface. Why does this matter? Because it keeps our code clean and flexible. If we ever decide to switch from GitHub models to another provider, the rest of our application won't need to change. Next, let's create our GitHub API key. In GitHub Models Marketplace, you can see all the available models. I'll add the link in the description so you can easily check them out and choose the one that fits your project. In the Model Selection dropdown, you can see all the available models listed. Here, today we're going to use GPT 4.1 Mini for our example. After selecting the model, click the Use This Model button. I'm using the free tier, so I'll click the Create Personal Access Token button to generate my API key. This token's default expiration is 30 days. I'll give it a name, YouTube GitHub Model Token, and then click Generate Token to create it. Okay. The token is generated now. Go ahead and copy the token. You'll only see it once, so make sure to keep it somewhere safe before closing this window. I'll paste the copied token right here in the code. But keep in mind, don't hard code tokens like this in a real application. And you can't use my token. I'll be deleting this token right after this video. Next, let's add our model name as GPT 4.1 Mini. Now that our chat client is fully configured with the model name, API key, and endpoint. Now, let's add a simple welcome message to display when the application starts. This will also show the instruction for how to exit the chat. Our chat application should be able to keep a conversation history, so here I'm creating a list to store all the messages exchanged between the user and the model. This list will hold both user messages and model responses, allowing the model to maintain context as the conversation goes on. Next, our chat application should run continuously until the user decides to exit, so I'll add a while true loop here. You might notice Copilot suggesting some code automatically here, but I'll write my own logic so you can clearly see what's happening step by step. Inside the while loop, before reading the user's message, I'll display you in the console so it's clear when the user needs to type their input. After that, we'll read the message that the user types. Next, I'll add a simple validation check. If the user just presses enter without typing anything, we'll simply continue the loop and ask for input again. After that, I'll check if the user typed exit. If they did, we'll simply break out of the loop and stop the chat. 
This allows the user to end the conversation anytime by just typing exit. Next, I'll add the user's message to the chat history. This helps the model remember previous messages and respond with context. Now our conversation history includes what the user just said, and we can pass that entire history to the model for its next response. Before showing the model's reply, I'll print a small label so it's clear which message comes from the assistant. Now, to get the model's reply, I'll use a for each loop with the getStreamingResponseAsync method, and here, I'll pass the chat history to this method, so the model has full context of the conversation. What this does is stream the response token by token, meaning you'll see the model's answer appear in real time as it's being generated, just like how you'd see responses in a real chat application. Okay, I'm using console right to display the model's reply directly in the console as it streams in. This way, each token or word from the model appears instantly, making the chat feel much more interactive, almost like talking to a real assistant in real time. I'll define a variable called assistant response to store the complete response. Then I'll keep appending each piece of text to assistant response. This way, we have the full response stored once the model finishes generating. Once the model finishes sending its reply, we'll add that full response back into the chat history. This helps the model remember what it said in previous turns and maintain context in the next message. Now both the user's message and the assistant's reply are stored, so every new request we send to the model includes the full conversation so far. Okay, now we're done. We've set up our chat client, handled user input, streamed responses, and stored the full chat history. Let's go ahead and run the application and see it in action. So now it's waiting for input, and I'll type my first message, what's.net? Right after pressing enter, you'll see assistant appear, and the model starts generating its answer in real time. You can see that both the user input and the model response are printed in the same color, which makes it a bit hard to distinguish between them. So I'm going to change the console text color. This will make it much easier to see who's speaking in the chat. I'm going to change the assistant's response color to green, so it stands out clearly from the user input. I'll keep the user input in white, and change the welcome message to yellow. Alright, let's run the application again, and see how it looks with the new colors. As you can see, the welcome message now appears in yellow. The user input stays in white. Now, I'll type the same message again, what's.net, and hit enter you can see the assistant's response appearing in green, streaming in real time. Let's try another prompt. I'll type, write a story about a superhero. And now you can see the model responding, streaming the story in real time. Pretty cool, right? The model generates creative text instantly. And the best part is, we're doing all of this right inside a simple .NET 9 console application. Let's try another prompt to test our chat history feature. This time I'll type, add 10 and 5. And the model responds right away. 10 plus 5 equals 15. Now, let's test if the chat history is really working. I'll type a follow-up prompt, minus 4, without repeating the previous question. And the model replies, 15, 4 equals 11. See how it remembered the earlier result of 15 and continued the calculation? That's happening because we're passing the entire chat history back to the model each time so it knows what was said in the conversation before. And that's it. You just saw how easily .NET can work with AI and large language models using the Microsoft.Extensions.AI library. With just a few lines of code, we connected our .NET 9 console app to GitHub models, streamed responses in real time, handled chat history. This shows how powerful and flexible the new .NET AI integration is. It's simple, fast, and clean to implement. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. There are many more AI-related videos coming. We'll explore how to integrate different models, build intelligent apps, and take .NET and AI development even further. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy coding.